how do I navigate between being disowned by my three children? Okay, so that's not a thing to navigate. That's So one of the reasons we stress is there's all these pre-givens, right? How do I navigate being disowned by my three children? Nothing to navigate. That just exists, right? Without taking on full blame and shame. Well, so don't take on full blame and shame, but allow it, right? One of the things I would love for you to see it, let's see it a different way. Well, here's a new way to see it. Instead of saying my three adult children uh, uh, disowned me, so my job is to avoid feeling pain and shame. Oh, my three children unhooked my deep, dark burying of my blame and shame by disowning me, helped me become present so that I could transcend blame and shame. In other words, had your three children not disowned you, which by the way, I would just love to say, disowned means they don't own you anymore, right? How do I navigate being disowned by my three children without taking on blame and shame? Well, what we'd like to live in a world is where you're not owned by, where you're not told that you have to be what you need to be, right, from them. In other words, your children cut you off from the burying and the numbing of blame and shame. So now it's coming up. So get excited and be present with it, right? There's blame and shame in your body. So if you're feeling blame and shame, bullseye, we're ready to transcend it. See, most of us think we're here to keep people in our life to stop us from feeling blame and shame that already existed in our body. So this makes almost all relationships and connections to family members an addiction, right? Oh, I have these children that are not supposed to disown me. Oh, good. They like me. Now I don't have to look at my blame and shame. But because they've disowned you, you get to expose the lie of blame and shame that's in your body. And disconnect yourself from the blame and shame that might be in the whole family unit already. It said, I tried reaching out, but they will not respond. Here's the upside to that. I hear it. I'm not not empathetic to your situation. I'm sorry to hear. And congratulations. Because they won't respond means you have to actually transcend the blame and shame. And why not do it now versus reburying it with their uh, apparent approval and then get it to come back three years later through another thing much harder, right? The blame and shame is here for you to hear. So my dare to you is not try to reach out and fix the circumstance to put the blame and shame back down, but instead create a present space for the releasing of them. Remember, as Maya Angelou says, love liberates. So liberate them to have the right to not own you anymore. And then you become present for the blame and shame that finally is released because you're not connected to people via blame and shame. We don't want to be connected to people via blame and shame. We want to be liberated. We want to be free. You're on this planet to be free. So what's happening is the blame and shame is finally coming out because you have nothing to grab onto to bury it. Isn't that great? So Janine, a new way to see it is my three adult children are liberating the blame and shame. It's up to me to participate with the liberation of it. I choose to free them from having to own me. And instead I am present for the energy of blame and shame through listening, through silence, and for the first time in my life, being here for myself. Isn't that awesome? Janine, that's freedom. This is a great way to see this. This is a way I see this stuff, you know, because blame and shame goes, it's all my fault. I did this. I hurt them, whatever. Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. But the blame and shame now, when you're not even talking to them, does nothing for you. So why not not let this trigger go to waste and use this time to actually transcend the blame and shame by being present for it and not grabbing anyone else's approval, just literally sit there and be present for the feeling of they don't approve of me. They're allowed to not approve of me. I'm just here for it. Janine, does that help at all? Just hoping that helps. <clears throat> Instead of worrying about taking on blame and shame, be present for it. Let it transcend. The loneliness does hurt. Yeah, of course. Catherine says the loneliness does hurt. The non-approval does hurt. Absolutely true. I totally hear you. That's how we transcend things. Real growth can hurt. You have two types of hurt. 
growth that can be chaotic and insane and real and then miraculous and dark and heavy and amazing. It's a real journey. It's like living on ayahuasca now. You guys doing this thing, you're on Kiowaska. We do Kiowaska every Wednesday and Sunday, right? You are watching Kiowaska. We're doing the work. We're choosing the roller coaster of freedom, right? It's a nightmare and then it's magic and you'll go through things like, when is this shit done? I don't want to be the spiritual. I wish I could just enjoy a football game and be like everyone. No, you ch you chose to use this life to get this crap out, Right. So we choose that. So there's one kind of pain, which is the loud, big, pull the bandaid off, really get to the core thing pain. That's big and scary and the release of a total egoic construct and horrifying. And then at the same time, there's another pain that's a stagnant, lighter pain that lives with you for the rest of your life. There's a video I saw recently called Inaction is a Slow Death. And it is because you can... Just choose to, I'm not going to go meditate. I'm not going to go work out. I'm not going to follow my heart. I'm not going to whatever it is. And then I'll just flip through. I'll just do the easy thing. I'll keep the old world going. And oh, I'm numb enough watching TV. I'm numb enough, whatever it is. Ah, okay. I don't, a beer. Okay. I'll have an, al I'll have some alcohol. I have some numbing distraction. This starts to build up though, because that deep pain is still there. So you're just going to get more and more addicted. And it's this kind of light, depressing pain that isn't the actual transformation of anything. And I sometimes hate that I have to choose this, but I have no choice but to be with the transcending it pain. So just because I, I there's no part of me that is not empathizing with the fact that it absolutely hurts. It's true that it hurts but merge me with my soul, no matter what the cost. That's my life. I am here to meet my soul. I am here to find out what I am. Ask yourself, what intention are you giving for why you're on the planet? Dude, Vivi talked to me about this the other day. My six-year-old daughter said, why are we here? She started asking who the first people were here. I was like, depends who you are, <laughs> you know? And we started talking about it. She was fascinated by it. She said, why are you here, Dada? And I said, to change the world, but I want to change the world by knowing who I am. And I said, why are you here? And she said, I want to change the world too. And I was like, hell yeah, there's a, there's an intention for a six-year-old, right? She said, help people and change the world. My six-year-old has an intention. Most of us adults don't have an intention. If, if you don't have an intention, you, your ego gives you one. It's to not upset anybody. It's to people, please. It's to numb everything, right? If you don't have an intention, your ego goes, well, then we'll just create an unconscious intention, right? My intention is to, right, overeat. <laughs> My intention is to numb everything. My intention is to, you get what I'm saying? If you, if you don't have an intention, you just live kind of aimlessly, and my intention personally is to know what I truly am. So it requires right now a lot of crying, a lot of releasing, a lot of AEP talking to you about it so I can put words to whatever the hell's going on with me. A lot of talks, a lot of evolving relationship. Everything has that intention. My relationship, my team, my friendships, my best friends, everything we do is to evolve to find out what the truth is of what I am. If something or someone comes into my life and the, it, it's not aligned with my intention, I have to learn to let go of it, right? Hell yeah, Mary. Mary Fast puts a heart in there because Mary knows that's Mary. Totally in that intention. Mary is in the work like you wouldn't believe. This team is in the work like you wouldn't believe. You know, I'm thinking of Brian who was on the call with me right before we started and just, I know his heart and I've watched him grow so much spiritually for the last five years. And just all my teammates were just all in the work, you know, just all in the work, just looking at our patterns and being here. And this is a team of people who have a very similar intention and know what we truly are to, to find the truest self, to get to the truth, right? It's beautiful. So are you, what's, what's your intention? I'd love to hear before we go to the next question, share with me any intention that you have. I'd love to hear anyone's intention. Is there an intention to, uh, we want to know Brian, <laughs> Zariana, that's a great intention to embody love. 
I love that. Expanding my heart, freeing myself, rule with love. Beautiful. Break free of the BS I've been living by. So let's put a positive on that, right? Because if you're looking at the BS you're living by and trying to break free of it, you're going to look for it. Become something that replaces that is my suggestion. Open my heart, live with passion, move my body more. My intention is to expand, be open, be loved, be the best that I can be, become free to bring beauty to the world, allow all that is, share beauty, align my spirit, inform core values, allow all freeing, don't let fear block my expansion, to live my ultimate truth, to be a bridge, heal body, be more authentic in what I'm feeling and what I believe, self-realization. Look at this. Imagine if every decision you made was towards these intentions, literally. Oh, does that latte move me towards self-realization? Some people it could sometimes, but maybe not for others, right? Oh, is 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 it expansive for me to eat that ice cream? Is it is it aligning with my soul to whatever, bring that person that's put me down so much into my life, right? Move the world, know my true self, bring humanity to healthcare. These are beautiful. Let my heart lead. My intention is to own my voice, speak up when I need to be heard. Listen to my heart to inspire enlightenment, love people, uh, share, be more open, to become free of the fear that has kept me stuck for these years. Hearing everyone brings tears to my eyes. This is beautiful. Move from my heart and trust what I cannot see before it happens. Oh, this is so good, right? So does it, so does every, every decision you make, does it honor that intention or does it, does it make it, you get what I'm saying? Does it, is it out of the way of it, right? So when someone shames you, is it aligned with your intention? Some people's intention might be to cater to shame, right? With they don't have a name right? If you don't have a conscious intention, that North star that you can look at, sometimes your intention can just be whatever life decides. And you're kind of just running a little aimlessly. Just to let you know, I'm really excited about our event coming up in June, June 20th through the 23rd, called the big one. If this little riff excited you, why do you immerse yourself for four days in the truth of what you are? We've discovered that when we do an event, the next day is exponentially better than the first day. So we thought, what if we keep going and really keep connecting uninterrupted and go into a world that we can't come back from, we can't unsee. So we've made these tickets unbelievably cheap. And December 31st is the last day that you can get them at a crazy discounted rate. They'll still be discounted after it, but it's a really cheap rate right now. If you wanna join us at the Alex Theater in Glendale for the big one event, me and I'm gonna have my guest friends, Aaron Abke and Kim DeRamo join me. We're going to do an insane four day event and see what unfolds from the infinite where you can't grab onto your old constructs anymore because you're in an environment that's celebrating the actual truth of what you are. And boy, will being around that cause you to not have the old story, the old limitation, the old addiction, and let those things fall out as we do deep meditations, dialogue, stuff that opens your heart, different exercises. We're going to do so many different things. And once you're on day four, you will not be able to unsee what you just saw. And you will finally have an intention because you got a taste of that true you that will cause you to move intentions from how do I get the person to like me? How do I make the money? How do I build the business to? I want that. What am I? I want to feel that. I want to know what I am. Join us for the big one. It's going to be insane and get tickets while they're costing almost nothing right now and move into a place of oneness that you can't move back from and watch as a lot of the true essence of what is causing the pain in your heart falls away. I can't wait to see you there. 